How's it going, everyone? Welcome back. Hope everyone is having a lovely day. So we're going to talk a little bit about New York Giants running back Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley, if you remember him and Christian McCaffrey coming kind of up next to each other there early, and it was just, whew, were they some players? Uh, we thought we was going to get possibly a decade of some elite running back play out of Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, really good running backs, really good catches out of the backfield, kind of rev revolutionizing the running back position where those two players really showing you what they're all capable of. Saquon came in there averaging five yards of carry, 700 receiving yards that season. And next year, seeing a little bit of a regress, just under 500 receiving yards. Still excellent, an excellent player in year two. Then year three comes around. And the torn ACL comes. And that's, you know, where things start to change for Saquon. And that is where we're stopping and saying we have to think about that because that is an important time here. And the Bengals right now sit as the number two odds-on favorite to sign potential free agent Saquon Barkley. We say potential if the Giants don't resign him or franchise tag him. Right now, the Giants sit as the favorite. Bengals number two at plus 500 odds. And the Bengals, you know, certainly could use an upgrade at the running back position. You know, Saquon averaging 2.9 yard, one yards per carry after contact last season. Joe Mixon 2.5. Uh, Saquon slightly lower in the yards per carry, but I, I think that's one of those situations where if Joe Mixon doesn't play, or well, it is one of those situations. If Joe Mixon doesn't play, a, you know, a third string Cleveland Browns college football team week 17 and averaging seven yards per carry in that game, uh, Mixon ends up with 3.8, 3.8-ish. I think it's 3.8 in that. I think it's 3.8 in that. 3.8, 3.9. So they end up with pretty similar statistics over that regards there. But, you know, nonetheless, you wonder, could Saquon come in here, same age as Joe Mixon, a couple, couple months younger, if he could come in here and make that impact be that impact player he once was for the new york giants would that be somebody worth signing for the cincinnati Bengals? add some dynamic add some elusiveness to that back for that pass, pass catching attack lots of good things could be drawn up again we see what the uh, 49ers have done with christian mccaffrey and we know this Bengals offense is much more potent, much more capable than the New York Giants offense. I was very much centered around, and that's the point of the important thing of these statistics, very much centered on Saquon Barkley. Uh, a lot of people said Saquon got Daniel Jones paid, paid big time last season because Saquon was really good. But the thing was, everybody knew it was, Saqu it was the Saquon show. It was the Saquon show. And that's what's so difficult to determine here in this situation, much like Derrick Henry in Tennessee. It's like, what kind of numbers does Saquon give you on a team like the Bengals, where they're passing the football far more than running it, teams aren't sitting there loading up eight in a box to stop this guy. He's gonna have seven in a box again. We just talked about it. two point nine yards per carry after contact, two point five and mix. That's, that's a full half a yard. Uh, that's a big difference, dang near. So you wonder, you wonder what Saquon's capabilities are in that regard. And you say, "Who? All right, let's talk about the money." Saquon possibly, you know, we're seeing anywhere. They're all over the place projections. We're seeing some say seven. We're seeing some say 12, some 14. And they're all over the place for a reason. Because we just talked about it. Saquon had a, wow, he, he, he was, to say the least, he looked like a Hall of Fame running back those first two years. And we go back to the knee injury. Because after the ACL here, this was a guy, again, mind you, who's, 2,000 all-purpose yards, 700 receiving yards, 500 receiving yards, seeing every target out of there, every touch, every target you could in uh, San Francisco, or New York. The ACL comes the next season, kerplunk. You know, he's under four yards per carry. The year after that the, was last year, the four point, what was the year after that? Two years after that. Uh, the last three years, we should say, though, you know, under four yards per carry, two of those seasons, 4.4 yards was the season before. That was the, you know, prior Giants year before this one, where, again, he looked really good. But I wonder because, you know, this is this is the thing that surprised me a lot because I felt like Saquon was a guy that came into this league. Again, one of the guys that was going to revolutionize the running back position that could catch the football out of the backfield and be elusive, make a lot of big plays. And he did that the first two years. But the last three years, his receiving yards come in at 280, 338, and 267. <sighs> Could be better, a lot better. I mean, those are numbers Joe makes. Those are numbers average to below average running backs put up. And he's still seeing a lot of targets. He's seen 70 targets last season. Uh, you know, there was a 10 more thing than Joe Mixon. So, so they're still feeding him, not to the extent they once was, but they're still feeding him. And that makes you wonder is, is you know, again, it's the Giants. Offense ain't the greatest. You wonder, are they prepared for that? Are they not uh, blocking well for those situations? Dan Jones not making the right reads? Or is it a lot of Saquon Barkley's elusiveness and fire just not there once it once was? And I think... You can say it's a combination of both. I think, you know, we, he's definitely, we're definitely seeing, I mean, five different times in his career, five different years, 
Forget about the knee injury for a second. Five different years, he had a, a pedal injury problem and an ankle injury problem where he missed time. Five different times. So there, there are some concerns about the knees and ankles of this man. And that's important because, again, we talk about, hey, yeah, you're on the Giants. Who knows what's happening? But those injuries add up over time. And I think that's why, you know, even at 27, where he, he might have a couple more great years in him. But even at 27, it's like you start to see some of that explosiveness, some of that elusiveness and open space kind of dwindle down a little bit for him. And that's a big red flag because that's a big part of what you signed this guy for. You're not, again, you know, this is why I like the Derrick Henry idea here. I still like signing Derrick Henry because this is a freak of athlete, athlete, one of the strongest guys in the league. And, you know, he's got through some injuries of his own fighting behind that Tennessee Titans offensive line. If there's a guy that's proven his best, say, oh, geez, Derrick Henry, you wonder about how much the wheels have come off of that guy. But I, I think of Derrick Henry like an Adrian Peterson, right? I, I just think he's going to be ageless. I don't think he's going to be, you know, Derrick Henry of 26. But I think he could be, you know, Derrick Henry of 29, 30, where he's averaging four to four and a half yards, four to four point three, four point four yards per carry and trying to pull those guys over and have a have a good role between the tackles. Saquon, you don't really think of paying a guy. He's, he's not got the size. He's not got the stature. He's known more for the speed, the elusiveness. And that's so much more important in his game and his longevity. So it's a much more risky sign, I think, here for the Bengals. And the injuries really concern me. Especially for that 11 or 12 million, because I think, again, the Bengals, they got to be really particular on how they spend this money you got to make sure you're getting some run block run stoppers and make sure you're run blocking pass blocking at the line uh what happens to the wide receiver position if t higgins walks up the door and tyler boyd you got to imagine they're signing somebody in free agents some money's got to go there somebody's got to go defensive tackle you'd like a pass rusher uh do you potentially bring in a safety are you worried about that position a little bit of depth right you know, they got some money to spend and you don't want to get it not just this year but next year you don't want to get the next year where you got to sign other young guys on this team you got to retain them and you might not have the money to do so because you got, you know, three years wrapped in a Saquon. So I'll, I'm passing on Saquon. It's very difficult because I have, I have loved watching Saquon play. He's an exciting player, but it's also important. And that's why I think the contracts are so way all over the place is because there's so many teams living in the past and the present and seeing what do you, you know, then thinking about the future where it's like, if you live in that past, you say, oh yeah, I'll still in that dough. But you live in the present and say, well, what just happened this season? Yeah, he had one of his worst seasons of his career statistically. Uh, we're still worried about some of them injuries. But it's still Saquon freaking Barkley. And we know that you can, you can have a bad year and come back and be outstanding on a football team that's much more equipped to make a running back look elite, which the Bengals are. You know, you put that, you put Saquon, you know, Saquon perfect again. You put Saquon on the Chiefs, probably averaging 4.5, four five, 5 yards per carry easily. Just the situation he's in. But can you get that? But that's a case like the Chiefs. Like we can get that out of a lot of running backs because of how good that offensive line is. I'm, I'm just, I don't think Saquon's for us. I don't think he's for the Bengals. I, again, I'm a, I'm seeing some free agents out there. I, if I had to choose one of the older guys, I'm taking Derrick Henry. I'd like to hope they can put some faith in Chase Brown. Maybe see how the draft treats them. I'm not against getting a running back, but I don't think Saquon's it for the price tag. He's a little too steep. If the Bengals get him at seven million, you know, seven or eight, it's like all right, that's a nice flyer. Anything over 10 is expensive. Love y'all's thoughts. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.